Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Victoria 3, where we are playing as Ethiopia. We have some surprising news now. Some very surprising and exciting news. It appears as though Britain is in the middle of a communist revolution. We have a council republic in, re in the form of revolutionary Great Britain here, led by John Connor it would appear. So, will he be able to save the future for the British worker? We'll have to see. In the meantime, we've, we've got an, enough money that we can be running deficits for a while with our newly expanded industry, but we're going to need to keep expanding our steel mills in Gondor and our glass works in Somaliland to get, the, uh, get those construction costs down. And that's what we'll be doing for the time being. While we wait for our economy to build up and for our military to be able to challenge this, this guy, who I just, I just never get over looking at him. Well, the revolutionaries have numbers but overall, the quality of troops appears to be higher with the government forces. In the meantime, we've got some dynamite. Vulcanization, which would allow us to use the rubber we harvest. I think pump jacks give us a, a bit better, a bit of a better uh, bonus with regards to our extraction. So we have a fit. So they seem to be stalling on the city of London, but might be promising in Wales. I'm gonna keep my. I'm. I'm gonna have a keep a very close watch on the revolution in Britain. Ooh, they're concentrating their forces. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I think they... I think the communists are about to win. They just took London. Or are about to. Well, they, they, they took Southampton. Which is important. If any of you happen to be from the uh, from around the Hampshire area, that's where my ancestors came from. So, in the meantime, our budget uh, deficit that we were running already seems to be, be resolved. We're nearly at the point where we're making it where where our sell orders are equal to our buy orders with steel. Though we'll need to get higher than that, obviously. We'll also need to be producing explosives here. To deal with the uh, increased amount of explosives we're using as an input to mine coal and whatnot. Yeah, so interestingly, as, as the name implies, this, uh, this revolt appears to be led primarily by the rural folk, which is to say the, the the peasantry rather than the urban factory workers, although I believe these are these are part of the uh, coalition, the Socialist League. Who's in this party? Ah, it's just rural folk. And this one's tendency is anarchist. Local communities govern their own affairs and send representatives to serve limited terms on larger cooperative councils. So, this is, yeah, uh, uh, it, it looks as though Britain is about to transform into a uh, syndicalist uh, council republic of some sort. 
And 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 indeed, it, it appears that they've won. They have won. This is the new flag. This is the new leader. Victoria is gone. And meanwhile, Canada's aristocracy is Canada's aristocracy and presumably the bourgeoisie around with it, along with it, although uh, the uh, apparently there. So we've got landowners and rural folk in a bourgeois revolution or in a bourgeois revolt, a reactionary bourgeois revolt against uh, against uh, British rule in Canada. Louis Avillard, you know, I'm just going to call him Red Green because this is the Red Green Coalition. Um, so, wow, that's a that's the the most shocking development, and that's uh, including the heavenly kingdom in Inner Mongolia we have still existing in 1888. I guess Prussia. Uh, I guess uh, we we also have Prussian. Uh, Prussian Bohemia, but meh. Britain going communist is is really the is really the selling point of this whole series, I think. Well, hang on. What what are the policies of, of the government? Council Republic, universal suffrage, uh, national supremacy. Uh, well, I hopefully the government will change all uh, will change all the bad laws. Curious how as to how it works. Their leader apparently is of an anarchist tendency, but I don't know. Maybe this appears to be a vanguard party. I don't. I, I don't know. Um, the. Uh, We'll, we'll, I, I think we, we'll leave the, the specifics to our imagination, since the mechanics uh, of this game can be can occasionally lead to questionable political coalitions as it start with to start with. But still, still, you know, it's uh, a bit annoying how the how the capital can never uh, change upon a takeover, but. I guess Birmingham is as good a place as any. Wow, uh, I'm ignoring my own country a bit here. And, you know, we've got important things to do ourselves. Like, we're, 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 we're in the midst of undergoing our bourgeois transformation into a capitalist country. In the largest pop group is still peasants. Uh, peasants uh, on subsistence farms. Now, what's the British Republic's at attitude toward us? Cautious. Meanwhile, we've switched to dedicated police force. We'll want to keep cool before we enact things like poor laws. Ah, so we have communists going going to war against other communists, and they say this this and they say this game wasn't accurate. Well, they say he's a trade. Uh, they say communists. I think it's. Solely because he's a trade unionist. Which, you know, politics on that can go either way. Can't say I entirely approve of the way the new British government has chosen to handle India. Let's quick get to general staff so we can make one little upgrade to our army. We now have a revolt in the Cape Colony as well. Okay, we've 
Got the stable supply of power journal event. Now we can go with shift work or steam turbine. Now that we've got this big surplus, let's get that upgrade going. Unfortunately, we don't have opium, which is to Victoria 3 what rubber was to Victoria 2, and that it's just clearly the best resource. And you just kind of got to have it. Now, if if you'll look if you'll look at the curve here, you'll see how much fast that this line started to go go up at a faster curve once we got our once we improved our construction throughput. Construction really is the most important number in Victoria 3. And if you take nothing else away from this LP other than other than this dude's face, I mean. Then you should take that away from it. 81 years old. I'm sure he baffles mankind for con by continuing to live. This McElroy brother creation. Honestly. Well, looking at the relative cloud of the people who support and the people who oppose, I think the time might be just about right to finally ban slavery in this country. Now, it's going to give us a bit of a financial hit because of uh, penalties from the nobility the noble privileges specifically. We don't seem to even have any militants, uh, any militant movement rising up against it yet. I think I waited for the right time. Fingers crossed. Italy, hmm, Italy seems to want Oman. Hmm, an obligation from Oman. Does Oman have any resources I care about? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, I'm really thinking it's not worth the trouble of getting involved. We don't need to be going to war with Italy just yet. And since we always could use some additional coal on top of the coal we have, I wonder we might be able to import some more. We got, oh. Oh, it's 
all back to level one for no reason. Well, at least we don't have a shortage. Unlike, you know, should be building more textile mills. We're short on clothes. It's one of the one of the chief pop needs, and probably one reason why our standard of living isn't at uh, middling or 15 yet, like I want it to be. Of course, another part of that is going to be taken care of once we once we ditch slavery, which will be happening quite 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 soon. Let's uh, make sure we've got the most recent uh, production methods. We'll also need more dyes. Just gotta make sure that all my dudes got clothes and some pants to put on. And while we're on that subject, we just got the technology for electric sewing machines. It's going to be quite useful for boosting our production along those along that front. So let's do that in our provinces that have textile mills and electricity at the same in the same place. Uh, next tech should be. Yeah, I think something military. We're, we're going to need to build our... Well, on the other hand. Got lots of... Economic building to do as well. Elevators is going to have to wait. Uh, yeah, breach loading artillery is the, the way to go. Got to get cut up, cut up on, on military tech or we're going to challenge the Italians. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Finally, finally, finally. The last of the laws, which are hidebound traditionalist aristocracy, had kept us from implementing, has finally been implemented. We have, at last, now and for all time, banned the institution of slavery within our borders. And as you can see, our economy is already starting to reap the benefits of free labor. The landowners don't even mind much anymore. They've got other ways of making money. I probably could have gotten it sooner if I'd been more willing to risk a civil war, but, well, I'd say the timing has worked out in the end. But wow, really busy, really busy political happenings uh, in the past decade and change. You know, uh, decades in which weeks happen and weeks in which decades happen. And you've seen it, seen pretty much all of it in this episode. We're going to continue to build up for our big advance against Italy, hopefully with the help of our new friends, the French. But that'll have to wait for another video. Until next time, I have been Maricotti, you have been you. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.